And joining us now to talk more about the economy and also the latest on the leak from the Supreme Court is Mark Lauder, the chief communications officer for America First Policy Institute. He was previously best known as Vice President Mike Pence's press secretary and strategic communications director uh, for the White House under President Donald Trump. Mark, thanks very much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Doug. Let's start now with the economy and the president's latest on inflation. Uh, your appearance is timely here because he just addressed his plan to combat inflation. Uh, it's a program called Tackling Inflation. And when I first heard it, I was, I was struck by how similar it sounded to me to the Whip Inflation Now program of the Gerald Ford administration. I don't know if you're old enough to remember it, but I do remember it. And it was a big flop. Um, he, he, he blamed, in, in many respects, everybody but himself for this. What were your, your thoughts as you saw it this morning? Yeah, that was my big takeaway. And it sounded like I was listening to a Democrat campaign speech from like 20 years ago. I mean, it, it, he was, bla you know, he was trying to scare people on Medicare and Medicaid and senior citizens. I mean, it was the same old playbook from Democrats going back 20 plus years. And it really had nothing to do with inflation. And, and when you look at it just today, we saw that, uh, the average price of gasoline reached the highest level in the history of our country. Uh, and Americans are feeling it at the pump. I looked it up and two years ago today, it was a buck 83 a gallon. Uh, you know, what was the big thing that's changed between then and now? It's not just the war in Ukraine, it was their war on energy. And that's one of the big telling signs. I mean, people are, are viewing this economy no longer through the unemployment rate or the jobs claims. They're seeing it at the price at, 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 when they go to the checkout, whether it's at the gas station or the grocery store. And that's how they're rating this economy and why so many of them are rating it bad. In those days of lower gas prices that you just mentioned, we were also energy independent, which we no longer are. He also made no mention at all, a glaring omission, that the Fed has been printing money like it's going out of style. That in and of itself is primarily the, the basic root cause of inflation, is it not? No, absolutely. And reckless government spending. And, and even some of his, uh, you know, Democrat leaning or liberal leaning economists predicted that his spending spree, especially last year when it came to the late, the last, uh, a COVID relief bill was going to escalate inflation. And that, and that prediction came true. And yet, you know, Joe Biden doesn't take any, any blame for that. In fact, he blamed his predecessor. He blamed Donald Trump for, for COVID relief at the height of the pandemic but also fails to mention that his party controlled the House of Representatives when they did that. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't just, you know, I, I, Americans' memories are a lot better than Joe Biden's. And, uh, and I think that they're gonna, they remember the good times that we had going prior to the pandemic. And what they see right now is nothing, uh, nothing short of a, a 180 uh, mm -hmm. from what we had. And I, and I think they also know the differences in policy, the policy changes, the war on energy, and all of the things that this administration has done to exacerbate the issue, not make it better. Well, a part of the Republican problem, which the president cited today, was Senator Rick Scott of Wisconsin's uh, plan for the economy, <laughs> never mind the fact that Senator Rick Scott is from Florida. Uh, but he talked about his plan for tax increases. Newsflash to the president of the United States, Senator Mitch McConnell, the minority leader of the Senate, has rejected Rick Scott's plan to quote uh, Senator Mitch McConnell. We will not have as part of our agenda a bill that raises taxes on half the American people and sunsets Social Security and Medicare within five years. That's that's a non-starter for Republicans. Absolutely. And, 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 you know, aside from Senator Scott and Senator Scott was even on uh, one of the networks today saying his plan is not the Republican plan. It's just his plan, his ideas. Right. And he's trying to gather information. So this is not the Republican platform and it won't be the Republican platform. And, you know, I work for the America First Policy Institute. You know, we are the think tank for America First policies. And I can tell you that those things are not part of any kind of America First platform. And so I get it. The, the president's going to to try to tag every Republican with one person's thoughts, and, and politicians do that typically, uh, but the American people see right through it. And, and for a president who campaigned on accepting the blame, not passing the buck, uh, he's certainly not living up to that campaign promise either. Before we let you go, I want to turn to the Supreme Court uh, conflict. We're seeing this turn into uh, what, what I 
to see is a, is a dangerous, potentially really dangerous situation with these protests happening outside the homes of the conservative justices on the Supreme Court. Uh, and we're seeing the Department of Justice do absolutely nothing about that. Yet, the U.S. Code states, and I'm quoting from the U.S. Code, whoever with the intent of interfering with, obstructing, or impending the administration of justice, or with the intent of influencing any judge, shall be fined under this title or imprisoned not more than one year or both. DOJ is doing nothing. No, and it's sad, and it's, it's another example of the politicization of the Department of Justice, the FBI, that, that you know, when Democrats are, are acting up, they turn the other cheek, but then they're going to have congressional investigations and manhunts for any time a Republican does something wrong. Let's, let's let the law be equal on both sides. Uh, you know, I will, I will hold, you know, you don't do this. You don't protest outside the, uh, the, the house of a justice or a judge. And can you imagine the outrage that would have happened? There would have been congressional investigations, nonstop commentary on cable news about threats to democracy and against the norm if Republicans had gone outside of RBG's home when she was still with us or any other appoint a justice appointed by a liberal. It would have been outrageous. And it's also something that Republicans and conservatives just wouldn't do. And all this happening while this opinion, which was leaked, is only a draft. We haven't seen the final opinion. It very well may change. But at the same time, legislation is now being considered in the United States Senate, which would make abortion legal at any stage of pregnancy, right up into the delivery of a baby. The position is supported, as you have uh, sent to me in a poll by Rasmussen, by only 17 percent of the American people. Your thoughts? Yeah, it's, it's really shocking how, how wrong the conventional wisdom is on this issue. And the mainstream media, for, for the much part, is carrying that water. You know, when you see a poll out there that says, you know, 70 percent or 70 some percent of Americans oppose overturning Roe v. Wade, that's because they don't understand what Roe v. Wade actually does. And we actually did a poll with Rasmussen that showed that 77 percent of Americans don't even know what Roe does. They think that if Roe is overturned, abortion is illegal. But what they do support, 65 percent support, if it go, being returned to the states and lawmakers to let them decide, which is exactly what overturning Roe does. And then on the contrary, the bill, the bill that's going to be voted on tomorrow in the United States Senate is wholly out of line with what the American people want. Only 17 percent, as you mentioned, support on-demand abortion up until the moment of birth. Only 30 percent support taxpayer funding for abortion, which means 70 percent oppose. I really don't know why Chuck Schumer's putting this bill on the floor. He actually thinks he's doing his party a favor when I think he's actually going to just show how extreme most of his members are and do the party more long-term harm. Mark, uh, we'll see how this plays out in the midterms. The Democrats see it as their galvanizing issue. We shall see. A delight to have you on, Mark. Thanks very much. We'd like to have you on in the future. Please consider that if you would. Absolutely. Look forward to being back. And that's going to do it for Centerpoint.